السعيد وهو نستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فارسله الله سبحانه وتعالى بالهدى ودين الحق وارزقه على الدين كله وله الحمد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة من ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we rely on him and we seek his forgiveness and we ask him to shield us against the evils of our souls and we ask him to cleanse us from the sins of our very own action. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one shall be able to misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one shall be able to guide. I testify that there is no other deity except Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam is the final prophet and messenger of Allah. He sent him with the true guidance and the religion of truth the only true religion, so that it can dominate over all other forms of worship, even though the disbelievers may dislike it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah. Fear Allah and do not let death catch you except in a state of submission to His will. Or as Muslims, maintain a life of submission to the will of God, Maintain a life of obedience to Allah so that when death comes to you, it catches you in a state of submission to His will or as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, O you people, fear your Lord. Fear your Lord who created you from one soul. And from that soul, He created its mate. And from both of them, He dispersed so many men and women and fear Allah by whom you interact with each other, through whom you interact with each other in this life, through whom you ask for your rights, and through whom you exercise your responsibility, and fear the rights of the next of kin. Respect the rights of the next of kin. Respect the rights of fathers and mothers and children and sisters and brothers. Respect the rights of the next of kin for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you is the ultimate observer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak only righteousness. Fear Allah and speak only the truth so that he may reform your deeds and forgive your sins. Because my dear brothers and sisters, whosoever obeys Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has definitely achieved a great, a, a great achievement. There is no other achievement on the face of this earth bigger than to live a life in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad. This is the biggest achievement that you can achieve on this earth. It is the biggest achievement that you can achieve on this earth if you die and you do not have any sins that you have to be responsible for. This is the biggest achievement in this life. And I would like to remind everybody that the most truthful of all words is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, which helps us understand, interpret, and enact the Quran. And all other matters, all other introductions, Innovations in this deen, heresies, introduction to things that we did not learn from the messenger and his and his companions and those who follow him. All these heresies they lead to misguidance, and misguidance leads only to the fire of hell. 
And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shield us all from the fire of hell. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Adam, la yaftinannakum ash-shaytanu kama akhraj alawaykum min al-jannah. O oh, you children of Adam, do not let shaitan deceive you as he got your forefathers, your father, Adam and his wife. He got them kicked out of Jannah. Do not let shaitan deceive you as he deceived your father to get him out of heaven. How did the shaitan deceive Adam, peace be upon him, out of heaven? This is a very important question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran directly, do not let the shaitan deceive you and trick you out of Jannah as he tricked your four parents. The first of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first of his human creation, Adam and his wife. So how did the shaitan deceive them? This scene was mentioned in the Quran many times and in the hadith because it's a very, very important scene in the story of our creation. If we understand what happened in that scene, we will understand how not to let the shaitan deceive us. If we understand all the little details that took place in that scene, we will understand how to deceive the shaitan and how to defeat the shaitan and not let him deceive us. The shaitan is this invisible force. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُ the shaitan, he deceives you and he can see you and he can observe you and his like. They can observe you from a place that you cannot observe them. They can see you and they can sense you and they can influence you from a position that you do not see them at that position. You don't feel them. You don't sense them. You only get their whispers. These evil whispers that direct you towards disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because my dear brothers and sisters, we are composed of body and soul. We are a body, a physical being, and a spirit. And, and the Quran is very clear about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sa'ad, with قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِنْ تِينَ As your Lord said to the angels, I will create a creation from earth. فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي as I set the creation, as I create that creation and set its shape, I will blow unto it from my soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. So our bodies are made of this earth and they will stay on this earth. Even after we die, which means when our souls leave our bodies, the bodies will stay on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَ وَفِيهَا تَمُوتُونَ وَمِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ on this earth you shall live, and into this earth you shall die, and from this earth you'll come back out for judgment. So we are composed of a body and soul, and the bodies are much weaker than the souls. Why? Because the bodies come from earth. But the soul, it comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this life. He says, I would blow unto it from my soul. This life that you have, that spirit, that soul, comes directly from the Creator. So it is much stronger than the body. That's why our presence on this earth is limiting our power. Look at all the corruption that's happening in the world. Imagine if we had unlimited power. Imagine if we had more power than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us with these bodies. We could do a lot more harm. Sometimes you meet somebody and you say, I, I don't like this person's energy. <coughs> It's because your soul and this person's soul, they're, they're at conflict. This energy, this feeling, if sometimes people refer to this as chemistry. I don't like this person's chemistry. This means that this person's soul and your soul, they're not in consistency. They're not in sync. So, in order for you to understand what happened between Adam and the shaitan, you have to understand this fact, that we are composed of body and soul. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and he commanded the shaitan to prostrate to him. And this prostration is not a prostration of worship. It's a prostration of glory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the shaitan to glorify Adam. But the shaitan refused, as we all know. And he said, 
He said, I am better than him. I would not prostrate for somebody who's created from less than me. So this arrogance, my dear brothers and sisters, this feeling of arrogance that the shaitan had because he thought he was better than us. But the point is, not who's better than who or who's created better than who. The point is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a command, you cannot be too arrogant to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot defy God, your creator, simply because you have a feeling that you're too good to obey God. You are better than this. I am too good to listen to God and, and respect my parents. I am too good to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wear my hijab and cover my head. I am too good to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstain from drinking or stealing or any of these sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned me against. To feel that you're too good, that you're better than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you. That's why the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in a hadith collected by Imam Muslim and others and the Tirmidhi and also in Sunan Abi Dawood and many other uh, scholars collected this hadith after Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. He will not enter heaven in whose heart there is an atom's worth of arrogance. An atom's worth of arrogance. Because arrogance comes from the shaitan. It comes directly from the shaitan. The shaitan was jealous of Adam, peace be upon him, and he refused to obey God and refused to prostrate to Adam because of his arrogance and his jealousy. <coughs> but what happened in that story? In Surah Al-Araf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the shaitan, he swore by the name of God to Adam that he is telling him the truth. And Adam, peace be upon him, the first creation, a pure creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never expected somebody to use the name of Allah in a lie. He never expected anybody to use the name of God to pass a lie. So when the shaitan swore to Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He swore to them, I'm just advising you. So Adam was tricked because the shaitan swore to him by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what did the shaitan promise Adam? And if we understand what happened in that very, very specific scene, we will understand how we can defeat the shaitan and how we can maintain a life of obedience to Allah. The shaitan promised Adam two things. In Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانُ وَقَالَ يَا آدَمْ أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى he says, should I not tell you about the tree of eternal life and a kingdom that will never be depleted? These two things that the shaitan promised Adam, timeless living, eternity in this life, you, the illusion that you're going to be on this earth forever. This is the illusion. And the second thing he promised him, he said, mulkin wa mulkin la yabla, ownership of all things and will never be depleted. These are the exact two things that every single day we have whispers to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of them, because of these two things. The first one is we think that this life is going to stay forever. We think that the moment in which we're disobeying Allah is going to last forever. Let me take off my hijab because I want people to see me as if this moment is going to last forever. I want people to see my hair. I want them to see my beauty. I don't want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's too long. I'm not going to live this life on this earth forever in obedience to God. No, I want to disobey God. Because this is my moment. This is the moment that's going to last forever. And this life is meant for me. And I'm going to live here forever. So I want to make it perfect for my desires. This illusion. The illusion that you're not going to pass this earth or pass this life into the hereafter and then be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me steal this money. Let me commit this sin. Let me steal this money because this is my eternal life. And this is my perfect, perfect life that I want to perfect. And I make, want to make sure I follow all my desires. Let me disobey God because this moment is going to last forever. This is the first illusion to the shaitan. <coughs> Youth. And promised Adam, alayhi salam, 
to trick him from out of Jannah. He says, I, should I not tell you about the tree of eternal life? This illusion that you're going to be here for eternity. And the second thing he says, and, and dominion. Kingdom that will not be depleted. Ownership of lots of things. Isn't this why, brothers and sisters, we usually disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we think that everything on this earth is ours. The ownership of things, possessiveness, being possessive over things, wanting to own more. My children are my children. They're my possession. They're my objects. I do what I want with them. My money is my possession. God is not testing me how I'm going to spend this money. He's not testing me where I earn this money. So let me earn it from haram ways. It doesn't matter. Let me spend it on haram things. It doesn't matter. It's mine. And I will not be questioned about this. These two illusions. The illusion that this life is going to last you forever. And the second illusion is that everything in this life belongs to you. And the truth is the opposite of these two illusions. First of all, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who promised you eternal life either in Jannah or in hell, but not in this life. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who promised you that you're going to live an eternal life either in Jannah or in hell. It's not the shaitan. The illusion that the shaitan gave you about this life is fake. It's an illusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ He tricked them out of heaven. He tricked them. He gave them an illusion. He deluded them. So the first thing is, this life is not timeless. This life is only a purpose for the purpose of testing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity, has given our souls an opportunity to exercise either their wickedness or their righteousness. And this opportunity is not going to be forever. It's not going to last forever. It's temporary. And the eternal life is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us not what the shaitan promised Adam alayhi salam. The second illusion is the ownership of all things, possessiveness. Everything you have has been given to you in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test you with. Everything, including the body that you live in. Because if, if, if there is anything that belongs to you on this earth, that means when you die, it should disappear with you. If you die, your business is going to, in the air, disappear. If you die, your kids are going to disappear. If you die, your parents are going to disappear. If there is anything that you think is yours in this life, it should disappear when you leave, when you die. But that's not the truth. Everything stays here. You come to this world with nothing, and you leave this world with nothing. The only thing that leaves with you is your actions, as in the hadith, your deeds. The, 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 the points, the decisions that you made and the points in which you showed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your true colors. You showed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether you're going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger or you're going to disobey them thinking that you are going to be on this earth forever or thinking that everything was given to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, <coughs> And you have come back to us, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, single, individual, just like you were created, with nothing with you. He says, and you have left behind what I have entitled you temporarily. What I have tested you with. He doesn't say, and you have left behind your positions. He doesn't even say you have left your positions behind <laughs> He doesn't even say in that verse, you have left your things behind. He says, you have left what I have temporarily given you in order to test you. You have left it behind. And now you're back here with nothing. Having said that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for my sins and your sins. الحمد لله الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه وبدأ خلق الإنسان من طين والصلاة والسلام على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأزواجه الطيبين 
وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين وعلى التابعين وتابع التابعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم آمين All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Peace and blessings be upon the Nasr of Allah if, if there is a, a way for you to squeeze if there are any gaps in between because I can see some brothers are staying outside so if you're able to squeeze the gaps and, and save as much space as possible may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so just like I was saying earlier just like I was saying earlier shaitan tricked or deceived Adam alayhi salam by promising him two things. He promised him eternal life and he promised him a kingdom that will never be depleted. And these two illusions, my dear brothers and sisters, are two of the biggest illusions by which we choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to think that our life on this earth is eternal. And to try to take possession of everything and refuse to give for the sake of Allah. Refuse to obey Allah. Even with our own bodies. Refuse to cover, the, say for the sisters, for example, to cover their bodies with hijab. There are some brothers who smoke cigarettes and ruin, your, uh, ruin their bodies. Others who drink. Others who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ways. Thinking that this life is going to last forever. And thinking they're falling under that illusion. And this is exactly how the shaitan tricked Adam, alayhi salam. So if we always remember that these are two illusions, they're not real. This life is not going to last forever. This life is only a test. It's not going to last forever. You're going to die. We're all going to die. And death is not bad news. It's only bad news to the disbeliever. Death is only bad news to the person who's disobeying Allah. But to the person who's living his life in submission and obedience to God, to God it's great news. Because it liberates you. It takes your soul out of that limited body and it takes it to heaven. So death is not bad news. It's only bad news to the disbelievers. And the second illusion the shaitan used on uh, Adam alayhi salam is the possessiveness. To think that everything you were given is yours and it will never be taken away from you. And this is an illusion. Because everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, he has given us to test us and he will be taking it away from us or taking us out of this earth completely for the day of judgment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our souls so that we do not fall in the same trick that Adam alayhi salam fell in. Now, the good news, my dear brothers and sisters, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ The good news is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your forgiveness just like he accepted the forgiveness of Adam alayhi salam. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the sins that we have committed and to forgive all of our brothers and sisters who have accepted this deen before us and who are going to accept this deen in the future. Allahumma a'izzal islam al-ansur al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izzal islam al-ansur al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izzal islam al-ansur al-muslimin. Wa rafa'a bakuwatika kalimata al-haq wa al-deen. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhaab al-nar. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا وقدوتنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم وإن ينصركم الله فلا غالب لكم فانصروا الله العظيم ينصركم واسألوه يعطيكم واشكروه يزدكم وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون